Well, in the last video, we went ahead and did the invasion part of the turn. Now we finished up turn one, and just let me give you a rundown of what transpired. For the Germans, I played a very cautious turn. I thought about mustering a lot of strength to go after the American beachhead because it seemed vulnerable, but after figuring out all the column shifts available to me, I figured it's only going to give me a two to one at best. It didn't seem to be worth the danger. So I went ahead and I put the, uh, the 16 Panzer units, I put them on this edge of the hill line and we adjusted this guy's position. Actually, no, he, he froze in place. Brought up the garrison, but not so close as to get attacked on turn one. Just uh, close enough to provide some support for a Zoc bond should I need it later in the game. The Americans advanced off of the beat. Well, let me finish up the German turn. I went ahead and moved the uh, German artillery out of Eboli. And I put the reinforcement Fallschirmjäger battalion into the town. I left the, the, uh, the tanks and the uh, 16th Panzer infantry in the other town and pulled these guys back from the beachhead just so they wouldn't get clobbered on the opening turn. Just leave them in position to support the town should that become necessary, and it will <laughs> in following turns. I moved the uh, 16 Panzer recon unit down to Salerno and put the Hermann Goering recon unit into the town uh, just uh, to the north of Salerno, actually to the northwest of Salerno. So that's the German half the turn, no combats, no attacks. The Allies had two attacks. The Americans, the uh, 36th Division came off the beachhead and uh, went ahead and used their tactical movement to move forward. They brought aboard the follow-on units, which are marked with half strength, and they do have artillery support, and they do have um, uh, their tanks and support guns, uh, assault guns, tank destroyers really, and they're at the bottom of these two stacks, marked with the half effectiveness markers, which is the result of having come ashore during that portion of the turn. They went ahead and attacked, they got a two to one ratio, with, even with the, the uh, doubling of the defense strength for the infantry in the hills, but they got a two to one ratio. Um, there's no tank uh, shifts in the hills, I gotta keep remembering that. So they got just enough factors for a two to one attack and then they used the air power to bring that up to a three to one, but rolled poorly and all they did was inflict a disruption on the German defenders. That was fortuitous because the allies led off with this attack, hoping to draw out artillery. Um, actually, you know what? This one isn't even in range. It's a four hex, one, two, three, four, yeah. They couldn't have supported a determined defense there anyways, but these guys here, Again, got just enough for a two to one, but they did have to use their tanks to do that, um, to throw them into the combat. They got a two to one attack on the town, but with the, um, the, the defender res retreat result, the defenders opted to go ahead and do a determined defense. And with the uh, uh, support of the artillery and their elite units, even though they rolled poorly, they were enough, it was enough to cancel the uh, retreat for now. But if they get another one of those partial results, it will throw them out of the town. So that's a matter of some concern to the Germans. So that's how things are going to end here in turn one. To finish up the turn, we'll take off the uh, half effectiveness markers off of the American units. Disruption is going to stay in play until the German recovery phase of turn two. And turn two will begin our first weather phase. So we'll start rolling for weather. And that's going to begin to bring supply points into play. You might be questioning why I didn't use any artillery down here. Uh, there's no British artillery yet, but the Americans did bring their uh, 36 infantry artillery uh, ashore. Chose not to use it because there's no supply points to renew it. So better off just holding on to it just in the event that we might need it. Uh, I figured a three to one's a, a pretty good attack on the opening anyways. And since there wasn't any danger of losing tanks uh, due to an unfavorable result, I felt like that was a, um, a good choice of not using my artillery before I built up some stocks of supply to renew those. So there is the end of turn number one. And the campaign will continue with turn two, which will bring on a bunch of German units. Now, here's a tip uh, for new players. And again, I'm a new player, so again, I'm, 
don't watch these videos for optimal strategy. <laughs> uh, and I get plenty of rules wrong, I'm sure. But let me just say this. If you learn the game, pay very, very close attention to the, uh, the, the information in the upper right of the counters. You'll notice that the units all kind of belong to several formations. You have the uh, 29 Panzer Grenadiers, you have the Hermann Goering units, you have uh, 15 Panzer Grenadiers, and they all have kind of like these guys have green uh, NATO symbols and so forth. And so they, they all kind of seem like they're together, but pay attention to that number in the upper right hand corner because some of them have an N and some of them have an S, even though they belong to the same formation. So watch out for that. Now, in the next turn, all of the 29 Panzer Grenadiers come up from the south. All the Hermann Gurings go to the north. But you're going to start to run into some where it's not exactly the same. So do pay very close attention to that. I'm trying to find an example of one. On turn one, here's an example. Turn one, you've got two Hermann Goering units. Well, I should say you have a Hermann Göring unit and a Fallschirmjäger unit. They seem like they're the same, but one comes from the south, one from the north. Just pay really close attention to that uh, because, oh, here's a good example. 26 Panzer, um, you got a unit from the north, you got a unit from the south, same uh, division. So, you know, watch out for that. That's an easy way to make a mistake that can be, you know, game altering because, you know, later on you realize, oh, I've been playing entirely wrong because that one unit entered in the wrong spot. So just watch out for that. You don't really have that problem with the Allies because you don't have guys coming up from the south until turn 11, and it's just this one batch on turns 11 and 12, and they're pretty clearly delineated here on the setup chart in addition to the, uh, well, I guess there isn't a notation in their upper right-hand corner so much on them. Well, I guess it does. It does say yes. So the guys that go to the floating reserve don't have the S notation. So uh, that's the way you can tell them apart. I think where you might make a mistake might be with this uh, this Commonwealth unit, the 7th Armored unit there. It'd be easy to mistakenly think that's part of uh, the 8th Army that's coming up from the south, when in reality this is part of the floating reserve. And we'll land at one of the beaches or the ports. So there you go. Day number one in the books on the day two.